The IQ difference between, let's say, an English seven-year-old and a, a, a seven-year-old in, I don't know, Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that is about five points. So th let's, let's hold the English IQ at 100. That's the constant. And so the IQ of the Saudi Arabian children is 95. By the age of 18, that difference is 20 points. And so something is ha 80 IQ in Saudi Arabia, 100 IQ in, in the West. So something is happening in these countries, which is that they are um, they are not pushing their people to their phenotypic maximum intelligence. But we know that intelligence in complex developed societies literally predicts not wanting children. And so by by making sure they're not too intelligent, they're also and it also um, predicts being ethnocentric and religious. And so by making sure that these people are not so intelligent, they're also making sure that they're highly instinctive, that their instincts hit in. We are an animal evolved to a certain environment, our evolutionary match. And that evolutionary match is death and death all around you and suffering and high child mortality. I mean, child mortality 200 years ago was 50 percent. It's one percent in the West now, even in somewhere like Afghanistan, it's 10 percent, only 10 percent which is what it was in England in about 1890. And so um, if, if you do that, if you take away our evolutionary match, our instincts don't hit in. And these include instincts to have children, that doesn't hit in, um, instincts to be religious and believe in God, um, and therefore believe life has eternal meaning and whatever, um, instincts to be ethnocentric. Um, and the, the, the God thing is important because what religions tend to do um, is take that which is adaptive and make it into the will of God. That's what they tend to do. Um, and so it seems to me that Islamic society in its current manifestation, uh, uh, by by not allowing intelligence to reach its phenotypic maximum, makes these people more ethnocentric, uh, more religious, more group oriented, more desirous of children. Um, and uh, computer models have shown us that um, on average, it's the group that is high in positive and negative ethnocentrism that tends to dominate other groups. Um, and so it's a group selection system. When a country like Kuwait has a liberal Western looking government, then the IQs of the children go up. Because Just they are within people, a generation. Within, 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 10, within years, the 10, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. Because the children are now being taught more science, they're being taught to think, they're being taught to, you know, think in a... Whereas then you get a conservative government in, in Saudi, in uh, Kuwait, they put less time into science and whatever, they put more time into just learning the Quran, um, and that's less intellectually stimulating. And so IQ goes down. Um, and um, equally in Saudi Arabia, this is interesting. Um, you, you find that in areas where women are strongly uh, controlled and they can't really go outside, so really conservative areas of Saudi Arabia, like Riyadh, then they, of course, what they got to they like to do. So they just read books and they end up with a higher IQ than women that come from Jeddah, where they don't have to wear the veil and they can run about and do what they like. Um, and, 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 and so, and so it's, it's, it's very liberal in, in Jeddah. And so you you get these differences um, uh, based on these kinds of factors, and in particular on the kind of Islam you're dealing with. So IQ also changes beyond. I mean, even grown up women would, uh, you know, gain, become better, have higher IQ scores, uh, you know, from middle age or something. Is that yeah, is yeah. That so IQ the twenty percent of what the differences in intelligence are to do with environment, and in particular an, an intellectually stimulating environment. So if you hang around. With intelligent people, right? Then, then yeah, it's like that will push you and do in, and do intellectually stimulating things like having your big YouTube channel and talking to I don't know people that are interesting and whatever. You know, then then, then this pushes your your IQ to its phenotypic maximum. If you stop doing that and just go and spend your time, I don't know, you know, da yeah. dancing and partying and having a laugh, then you 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 won't be pushing your IQ to its maximum in the same way and so it will it won't be as high like let's think about having a job as a doc a, i don't know doctor and mm -hmm. that's an intellectually stimulating job and so you're pushing your iq to its phenotypic maximum all the time and then you retire and you just spend your time playing golf now okay golf you've got to think about it golf fine i appreciate that but it's not as intellectually stimulating as being a doctor
And so you would imagine that the person's intelligence would decline. So who you hang around with, who are your friends? And the thing is, people that are intelligent will tend to be attracted to other intelligent people. And people that aren't very intelligent will tend to be attracted to people that aren't very intelligent. And so there's this kind of, what's it called? Is it a Matthew effect? You know, from, from, from he who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. It, 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 that's kind of how it works. But going back to Saudi Arabia, yeah, you have a, you have a, a society which, um, to a certain extent, does not value thinking and science and whatever it values, religion, and that does not help to push people to their fields of maximum IQ.